Today I'm going to try something just a little bit nuts. I am going to see if I can create a song where I make all the major decisions about the song using Google's randomizer. Let's see if I can pull this off and it doesn't sound like complete poop. And welcome to Music with Marky. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is to load up Google's randomizer on a browser and I'm gonna first pick a key. You got one of 12 choices, A through G sharp, and whatever I pick, it'll be that major key. I can use whatever relative mode, minor key, whatever, depending on what style the music's gonna be. Uh, I am going to generate a random tempo within a reasonable range. I'm not gonna write a song at a tempo of 260 or something like that. And uh, I am going to, the style of the song is gonna be determined by the randomizer being used with Easy Drummer. I've got libraries of drums, and so I'm just going to number them down the list on the left side of the screen. And whatever gets picked in there, it'll be that kind of beat and that kind of style. And that's what I'll have to write a song to. I'll take only drum parts from in that library and build the structure of a song. So let me pull up the randomizer here and let's make our decisions, and then we'll get to the desk and get writing. This is going to be a long one, I'm sure, because I have to do all these parts in order. You know, it's going to be my longest video yet, but it could be a fun journey. Let's see. All right, we're going to enter 1 through 12 here and pick our key. We get number 8, which gives us the key of E major, or whatever relative minor or mode we want to use for it, depending on what style we pick. Let's go on to the tempo. And I'm going to put in something in a range here, 80 to 160, so it's a range I usually write in. Oh, all right, there we go, 100. Good medium old rock tempo. If we get a rock song, let's see what it is. And finally, which drum library are we going to use? So I've got Easy Drummer, and I've got a ton of this stuff loaded. I am one of their best customers, no doubt. So I'm just going to count down the left side there. I have 36 libraries to choose from. All right, and so I've got to pick the 24th library Okay, so this ends up being metal beats. I have straight or swing. I'm going to choose swing just to make it more of a challenge since I kind of got something that um, metal is something I do all the time. Doing it in a swing beat will be more difficult. And I'm going to choose 110, whatever song 4 is, and I'm going to build the entire thing out of this library. All right, now that I've picked the tempo and all that, I've loaded up a template in Reaper here, which is like my basic go-to template. Uh, with the drum sounds loaded, an easy drummer that I want, and we randomize our way up to uh, which drum library. And so what I'm going to do is put this together on drums first. I'm going to lay the whole song out. If I need to adjust anything because uh, what I play on the guitar or the riffs I come up with along with it, we'll do that a little bit later. But I'm just going to do a structure like a, a verse, chorus, something simple. We're going to make a simple... Uh, a B type of first chorus, first chorus type of song. Maybe I'll come up with an intro too. Let's let's see how it feels when we uh, put some drums to it, and then I'll play along. So I've got I'm into the metal beats here as we camp with the randomizer uh, and a swing beat. I chose something close to the tempo that we're uh, we randomized to, and I'm going to start with this closed hat beat here. It's cool. I'm going to just drag and drop it over here that I'm going to start on measure two because I want to have four clicks before I play in so I can start at the same time as the drums. And I think I'm just I'm going to have the verse be eight measures, the A part be eight measures. And I'm going to use part one and then part two of the beat. Then I'm going to listen to it and see if I want any fills or anything. Open feels good. Yeah, both instances, the fill that's built into the beat, I like. So there's our A part. Real simple there. I'm going to notate it. Just I like to put these on here. Uh, I like to name the parts. So we'll just call it verse 1. And I like to use yellow for verses. So I set the color there to be yellow. And now we have it notated. Now I'm going to go for a chorus. And I think for the chorus, I'll have it be maybe something on a ride. Let's hear a beat here. Okay, that almost sounds... In my head, I'm hearing that more like a pre-chorus part. 
and that rolls into another part. So maybe I'm going to ride a ride symbol as a pre-chorus, and then I'm going to do something on the china for a chorus. Um, starting to feel like I'm going to have a fuller arrangement here, not just A, B, A, B. Maybe it's going to be intro, verse, chorus, or intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. So I think I need to make some room for an intro. Maybe it'll just be like a clean guitar by itself, something very quick. So I want a four. I'm thinking I'm going to do a four measure intro here. I don't even know what it's going to be yet, but I know it'll be something that matches whatever riff I come up with. So I'm going to move all this uh, to the fifth measure. So I have one, two, oh, excuse me, sixth measure. Then I have four measures for an intro. So let me move this like this. We're going to play an intro to a click later. So I'll create a little section here. This is just from, from here in the drums. I kind of get a vision in my head of what I want to do structurally, what kind of guitar parts I think I'm going to play before I even ever get into playing along with it. I, can, I don't know, I just kind of envision it in my head because I've done a lot of these maybe. I don't know. All right, so we're going to drop this ride beat in here and just have a little four measure pre-chorus. Okay, that fill, that's pretty good fill, but I want something that's going to lead up a little more and have more of an impact when a chorus does it. So let's hear what we've got in here. Yeah, that really, that almost sounds like it would be before a solo. Let's remember that for later if I'm going to put like a solo bridge type of part in here. So that's number six. That's pretty good. Also good. Hmm, I like that. It's complex. Let's see if it sounds good dropped in place there. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a nice build to it. All right, so there's our pre-chorus. And we're going to notate it. At the region, we'll call it pre chorus one. My pre chorus color is generally some kind of green, something pale. And now we got to work on a chorus part. I'm going to go to the China symbol. We're going to stay metal here and use the China symbol for a chorus. Yeah, I've been driving, I can play big open chords, something simple there. Drop that in, and we're going to put this one next to it, so the chorus has two halves, okay, it's going to need a different fill, something that leads down to a re-intro, something that has a little bit more of a, a tail leading away, so let's see. All intense. That might work. That's long. A lot going on there. All right, we're going to use this one. And so this is our chorus here. Great region. Chorus is our blue always. Chorus one. Set it to blue. Okay. Now I know that I'm gonna whatever I did on that intro or what I'm gonna do on the intro, that clean guitar I'm thinking of, or effective guitar, whatever it is we come up with there, I'm gonna play it again after the first chorus. I need another hit. I need like a downbeat hit so we can hit a big chord there. Yeah, so that'll be the one of the reintro, and it's going to be one, two, three, four measures. Again, we don't even know what we're playing there, but it'll be cool. Reintro, set it to orange. Okay, 
So I have now the front half of a song. I have an intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and a re-intro. If I'm not going to put a solo section in the song, uh, like if it was a simple vocal song, I just repeat all this again minus the reintro. I would go now. I would go verse, pre-chorus, chorus, like a solo section. I was saying that fill, fill number six, if I wanted to do that to lead into some other part that is like a crazy solo, and then I would do a third chorus. I do that kind of thing a lot on songs with vocals. That's like a general structure. This thing's going to be instrumental, so I don't know if I want to actually have a whole solo section. I think we're just going to go A, B, C, or, you know, verse, pre chorus, chorus. Then we're going to do verse, pre chorus, chorus again. I'll put that crazy fill at the end, and there won't be a re intro. It'll just be a big build to a bang chord ending. So now I can just take here, <clears throat> and I'm just going to copy all these drums. And I've got the whole structure again a second time. So I do need to notate it again, so I know where the heck I'm at while I'm working on it. Okay, now everything just repeated. I want to change some drum fills in it, so it's not exactly the same each time. Give it some uh, variance. I know that I want to have that big ending fill, that number six one. So... Okay, that's going to be the end of the song. It's a two measure fill. Make sure that works. Yeah, that works. Uh, the only thing there is there's two of the same cymbal hits. At the end, I want to move this crash cymbal. Sure, and then a China, why not? And then we want to have different fills. So that fill coming out of the pre-chorus, we want a different one now. All right, that's a nice build. I might should have done that the first time. So it's two measures. I only want one of the measures of it. I'll drop it in. Why is that not what I heard? Did I do something wrong there? Well, maybe it's the first half of it that I want. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah. So the second time through to the chorus, it's got more of a build. I think I want to switch that then because that should be more the first time you introduce the chorus. So I'm going to drag that there. I'm going to put that in its place and we'll swip, swip swap them. <laughs> and then what I want here is I'm not going to use the stock fills that were in the verse the second time through the verse. So we have some variation on it and everything doesn't sound the same. Okay, that goes there. Way too intense. Oh, I already know what that one is. What am I doing? I think I'm going to end up just using two measures of a fill. Let me go back to this one here. See how that sounds. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I have an entire drum structure now. I'm going to close this up. Make sure I save it. And we have the drums with a, a blank space that'll have a click on it where some kind of clean guitar can go. So let's just take a listen.
of a build the first time you're gonna hear it. Whatever it is, it's gonna be more intense. Some kind of clean part. I'm gonna come up with this last, probably. I'm gonna do all the other stuff first and then drop a cool, affected or clean part in there. Song. Cool. So it's only it's under two minutes. This is a mini song in all respects, but for the purposes of uh, doing a video here, I think it's enough to show that we can make a randomized song. Now I'm gonna grab a guitar. Uh, this is in. C sharp, C sharp minor was the key we came up with. I think I'm going to grab a seven string. We'll talk about that when I grab it. And uh, let's get to it. All right, so it's the next day after I did the drums here. I'm going to be doing this song over several days, maybe a couple weeks even. So there's going to be like, you know, multiple costume changes. Um, I did mess around with a loop a little bit playing the guitar. So I have an idea for a verse already. I'm going to start trying to record that verse here before I have to get going for the day. Um, the song, we randomized it to E major. I luckily randomized a metal type beat, which is more within my genre uh, or the genre that I play all the time. So won't be too difficult, but I don't want to do, I'm going to do the relative minor of the E major and do something in C sharp minor here because uh, just doing a happy E major key over a metal thing is going to sound a little bit weird. So, uh, you know, we're still in key with the randomizer. C sharp minor is, is E major. So. I've got a sound dialed up here, um, and I'm going to try playing the thing that I thought of when I was just jamming around with the loop. Um, I don't completely have it fleshed out, but I think I have the beginning of a verse. Not sure where I'm going on the pre-chorus yet, but let's let's record this. I have to pull up a sound. Um, I got my Axe Effects loaded up right now, and I'm using this Kiesel Airy 7 string. I have tones that I made specifically for it. Uh, using an FAS, uh, Fractal Audio Systems Amp. I've got a little bit of a notch here uh, around 5K because this sound has kind of a peakiness to it that, that doesn't sound pleasant to the ear, so I'm trying to eliminate that. But let's give this a go. I'm going to double track this left and right. Um, I also need to notate. I always do this here uh, where I notate what I'm doing in the track, so it's Patch 505 scene one, 505 S1, and I'm using pickup two on the guitar, and the tone is at 60%. I dial the tone knob back a little bit because it's a very bright pickup. And I don't always need all that brightness. So let's give this a go. Oh. That's not what I was looking for. It's I gotta remember that because I have to double it. Let's see if I remember it when I get to it. So we gotta do that again on the right side. And I might have a verse here that I like. Yeah, 
remembered it. All right, let's listen back to the stereo take of it. See if we like it. Cool. Now that guitar tone, it's very middly. I want to add some sizzle to it without it becoming annoying to the ears. So I'm going to quad track these guitars. So I have to duplicate that track there. Oh, get it there. Okay. Delete these two. And I'm going to have to perform this two more times, but I'm going to switch to a Kemper patch that I have saved for this that I know sounds it's a really hot sounding patch. It sounds like an amp just cranked up in a room. So I want to get that loaded up, just waiting for the profiler to start, and then I'm going to play that. So let's turn this off. And we have this Kemper rig that I got. Um, I think it was from a premium pack. AS Bogus Golden Arm is what it's called. So. Totally different character to that sound, but I think if I blend the two, we're gonna get something nice. So, AS Bogus Golden Arm. I don't need to notate the pickup selections because it's gonna be the same as above. And let's see what happens if we add this in. Might not need quad tracking, I'm realizing. I possibly could just put this up the middle. Let's see what that sounds like. Nope, nope. I only gotta hear it for a second to know that ain't it. I need to quad track it. That was not what I was looking for. Lost in my own head there. Hey, chooch. Realizing as I did that, that on this track, I didn't do, I just did, I need to get that chug in there. So let's just get that and then we're good to go, I think. Okay, now let's listen to all of it and see if we like it. It's not bad. I know that I've got the dun 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 doesn't exactly match the bass drum. There's less bass drum hit. So I either need to add bass drum hits in or change that part a little bit. I gotta go get showered up and start my day. So I'll be back for that and the pre-chorus and chorus with another costume change. All right, I'm all cleaned up and back and I stink party now and put some color in my beard and I'm ready to work on the next parts. Um, I have no idea what I'm gonna do here. And when I'm in this kind of situation uh, where I haven't heard anything in my head for what comes next in a song, I do one of three things. One is I'll just keep coming back to it, listen to it a little bit each day until something just formulates in my mind and I hear and feel something. Um, 
you know, that could be a long process. It could be sometimes I'm holding on to song ideas for weeks and months. So I'm not going to do that with this one. Um, the other way to go is to just kind of jam along with the tracks, which is how I camp with the verse idea and just keep jamming and jamming and jamming until something comes out that's pretty good. And the third thing is to kind of rely on some theory knowledge, things that I know from the past that work or ways to piece things together uh, using a little bit of the music theory knowledge that I have. And in this case, I think it's going to be a mix of that and jamming along. I know that for the verse, we need to get back to the C sharp, right? So uh, one method to resolve back to a C sharp is to take the fifth, which would be the uh, G sharp here, and play it as a dominant seven. So I know that I might want to find my way to that. Um, that's kind of very like, you know, old school sounding, not too metal. So I don't think I want to do that. Another way to do it is to lead up um, from the minor tones. Um, so if this is a C sharp, I want to go A, B, so A. I know that that kind of lead up is going to work. So I think that's what I'm going to try to find my way to, but I got to listen to the chorus beat, jam along and see if I can make my way over to that. I know I want it to be real open because I'm going to play lead over this part. Got those locking and da -da 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 -da, that kind of stuff. So. So maybe something like that. <laughs> Gotta get that right. Like that. So I'm getting back to that a little soon. That's kind of the idea there. I can make that work. So I've got the A, the E, F sharp, A, E, B, A, E, F sharp, E, F sharp. I think that's how it's going to fit. I didn't like the very end of that turnaround, but it's the right length. So, it's not fitting the way I want it to in my head. Let's try one more time. kind of work there, just the double up of the C-sharp. Let's try that. And then we're going to figure out how to get there with the pre-chorus. We're going to connect the two spots. So we're back on the Axe Fex patch here. I'm not totally syncing up with the drums or anything. I may have to go back and figure that out, or maybe where I just keep the guitar chords open and sync up with the bass and the drums. I don't know yet until I hear it, but I'm getting the framework down here so I know what the heck I'm playing against.
That might not suck. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So I'm going to have that whatever I'm doing in C sharp there and that intro part. So now I just need to connect the two parts. Uh, so I'm starting on an A, which is the minor sixth. So I went from here. That's real major sounding. something in F sharp and I have to get to an A. <laughs> get out of key there. Metallica there. <laughs> Sloppy as heck. up like that maybe even though the drums are building I'm not syncing with them I think the bass is gonna do that that might work let's give that a shot 18 that's where the part ends I don't know why I gotta switch to the top one first, just makes me feel better. All right, let's double that. That's not half bad. I got to go through and add the other guitar from the Kemper if I'm going to keep the quads going. We have to kind of hear. I'm going to add and remove layers. We'll do that in the next piece of this. I got to figure out where I have quad guitars, if it's all the way through, if it's just on the verses, or if it was too much on the verses, and I need to add it to the choruses only to make them fuller. I know that I'm going to have a lead guitar on the chorus, and I'm probably going to, on this pre-chorus, have some kind of atmospheric undertone or, or something where it's just hammering like a something where it's just high notes. Um, Got to play around with it. Let's get on that. Okay, so I don't want to quadruple all the guitars again, but there is this kind of drop off here when you go from the verse to the pre- Because that extra set of stereo guitars drops out, but I want to have something, I want to create a little bit of a lift there. So I think I'm going to take those same tracks. I've got the Kemper on again, and I'm going to do something. Just an accent kind of piece underneath it. I, I need some effect on it though. I want to, I want to get some uh, delay in the mix here. Get plenty of it. 
bring the reverb up. Don't know if that's gonna work. I'm not even gonna record it yet. I'm just gonna play along. I think I'm gonna double up when I do that. But I'm gonna to have to um, turn the effect off for that. All right, let's see if that works or if it's gonna to be too loud in the mix. Okay. Gotta double it. Does that work? Oh yeah, that works great. Cool. Okay, so now I gotta turn off the reverb and the delay, switch the pickup. And then I think I'll do the quad guitars and the chorus again or at least just hit that fade. We'll see. All right, so that, I've got to have it punch in right there. Sounds pretty cool. Let's hear it from the verse. Having that thing suddenly drop out like that, <clears throat> I don't like that too much. So we have to double double. Let's duplicate these tracks. Okay, and get rid of everything that's not needed. So this will continue and we'll do a fade on it. Let's see if it works like that. Otherwise I'll turn everything back on and play again. Yeah, that's okay. No, it's not so drastic. All right, I just have to play the quad guitars on the chorus now. I'm not going to record that. I'll just put that down and we'll move on to the next part. All right, I'm back at it. It's uh, late at night here now, so I've got the headphones on and I want to wake up the guys in the other room. And uh, I've already recorded uh, a piece of the bass for the first half of the song. I didn't want to do like an entire bass track performance of this. I just kind of want to get to the highlights and I'm going to play what I did and then show you how I clean up the bass. Turn the volume down here. Um, I have it in context of the music, but then I'm going to listen to just the bass and the drums soloed so I can clean up anything where it's not really locking into, especially to the bass and snare movements. But this is what it sounds like in the music. A little sloppy. All right, so now we're going to solo that. And anytime I hear something that I'm not happy with, it's going to punch in that little piece of it. 
Uh, you also notice that I am using a patch here, RN Harkey. That is something I found on the rig exchange on the Kemper. Um, Kemper base profiles I like a lot. They're good. All right, let's find any problems now. That was all good. A little bit loose here and there, but I'm not going to go crazy getting it mechanically tight. I like the human sound. It sounded good with the music, so I'm okay with what I have there. All right, maybe those hits here. Where are they? Yeah, it, it's good. It's okay. I don't think I'm going to get that a whole lot better. Okay. Surprisingly, it doesn't suck. There's usually a lot of stuff I have to touch up in these, but I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is copy it over. I had copied all the guitars over, and I'm going to copy it over to the second half of the song, and then I'm just going to play alt versions of a couple of the fills that I did so that it's not the same each time. The guitar is obviously going to be the same each time, but that's going to get changed up by the fact that on each chorus, I'm going to play a different lead guitar part. I'll play the same melody, but it'll wander into different areas. And on the second verse, I think I'm going to have a lead guitar in it, too. I will do things to break this up, make it not same. So let's find the fills. All right, and that stuff all locks in with the guitar, so that has to be the same anyway. I think it's going to be in here. I can't do anything different there either. Okay. I guess this stuff's going to be pretty repeatable. I thought I had more fills than that. There's one. Da -na 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 -na. So that's 43.3. Yeah. And 44. Oops. Something like that in there. I'm playing something longer. Cool with it though. A little too much pick attack. Do something in there. It helps if I remember what key I'm in E major.
Again, a little too much attack. I'm okay with that. And then we need a good build up at the end of the song now. the wrong note there. Sounds kind of cool though. It's kind of cool, but I don't think I'm going to keep it. Trying to lock in with the drums a little there. Right, those drum hits there, they need to be right. Let's see if I can nail it. Da -da -da. And I gotta count that. Nope. There we go. So that smacks. Obviously, I didn't play all that uh, contiguously, and I'd have to go back and learn it if I was the bass player. And if we were doing it live and I had handed some other bass player, he'd probably write something different or just smack me around for piecing together something that's not really possible to play properly. But sometimes that's how I put these together. Let's move on to the lead parts. Actually, no, I have to do the intro and the reintro guitar, that clean stuff that's going to go there, and then we'll get on to the lead parts. Okay, I'm back over to the axe effects here. I've got an idea for the clean intro. I was just messing around with it. And this is this is it uh, with the regular sound. I'm gonna have to find an affected sound for it. So let's just play what I'm talking about. So I think that's what I want to do, but I need uh, a good Axe Effect sound for it. I actually need to add a track here. So let's, we'll just duplicate this track, pan it to the middle, get rid of anything that's on it. Okay. So that'll be ready. I don't know what we're going to use in the Axe Effects yet though. Let's load that editor up and start plowing through some of the cool atmospheric sounds. Okay, so the really weird stuff is going to be back here at the end of the presets. Nope, not that. I'm just randomly trying stuff and see what I come up with. That's kind of cool. Let's remember that 345. No. Hmm. Nah, I want something that's got a long delay on it. That's not bad. Let's get the tone down. Alright, now let's get the delay. We're at 100 BPM. Alright, let's try this. That wasn't bad. Let's do it in here too. 
See how it feels in the middle. Oops. Didn't turn the click off, I turned the magnet off. That's okay. Chewing on gum a lot here. You know what? It's okay. It's not great. Let's get something better. Oh, not that. That might be cool if I combine it with the other one. Oh, I forgot to write down what I used there. Oops. I have to go look back at this video and see what I used. Let's put these two together. See what we think. What's that sound like? I think we might have something there. It says one, three, one, pick up four. 60. All right. All right. I think I got something there. Tomorrow we're going to jump in and do the lead guitars. All right. I couldn't stay away from it. I had some ideas after I walked away and I was ready to go to sleep and everything. And now I'm in deep. Uh, I made a couple changes. One thing was ending the pre-chorus here. I had that fill that was just a dun 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 dun. I put that in there instead. Uh, I moved that fill to over here, and I realized that this intro part would sound cool with some orchestral type drums. So check out what I did here. That's got a cool build up. It's much better. So now I'm here. I'm going to work on this melody for the chorus first before I do any other kinds of leads. Um, I'm just going to play along. I've dialed in uh, orange rocker verb. My, one of my favorite sounds is on the Kemper and I'm doing leads on my old PRS custom here. It's, it's my best guitar. So no, we're, we're in C sharp minor. <laughs> And I'll hang around the C-sharp minor pentatonic, see what I come up with there. Mm, mm. I want to hit that. I want to sync up with the drums there. Uh, I'm hearing something in my head. I got something. Oops. It's cool. Sometimes I just hear this stuff in my head and then I, that, that's where I did a lesson about theory, about how important it is to know music theory so that when you hear something in your mind and you're feeling something, 
you know what notes to play on the guitar. Um, and so I've got something in my head. I want to run with it. suck. Beginning was bad. Alright, so I muffed the beginning. Oh, I need to play that again. 19. All right. How did I do? I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need to catch that slide in. I have to put the click on too. It's lacking some feeling. Might be better. Okay, I want to add a little delay to it. I love delay. I definitely abuse delay. I use lots of it. I need to go there. The ending's not quite right. Now I just got to do roughly the same thing for the second chorus, but I'll vary it at the end. a moment in there but I goofed it up let's try it again that was kind of cool I 
I got out of control there, but I might be able to splice this out of the other two. Let's see if I can get away with that. It's all right. You can hear the punch a little bit. I might futz with it later. So the only other thing I need now is I actually want a lead, something that's a little bit more raucous, raunchy, on the second verse, since the second verse is just a total repeat. So I need a, I want to have something on the sound, like a flange or something. I've got some effects on here, so let me see what I can get away with. I'm hitting some buttons over here on my... Hot there for a second. All right, I'm just gonna totally let this one rip. See what happens. And I'm gonna I'm gonna want to start like something raunchy like that. Do major. been cool. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. Kind of want a phaser on it too. I wish they didn't do the flange too late now. A lot of noise coming out of there. All right, I think I got something. I'm gonna mess around with mixing it, add another little effect on there. We'll come back and play the whole thing. I'm gonna talk about some of the stuff I have going on in the studio end of it. We're just gonna play it all the way through. Okay, that's it. We're gonna listen to the whole thing now. I'm gonna talk to you just about a couple of mixed notes in case you're interested in studio stuff like that. Um, I've got, uh, I messed with that lead. I put a couple of different effects, the, that verse lead. I switched to this timeless fab filter plugin that I got and changed it to the sick vowel preset and also stuck a delay on there, a different delay, uh, one that I have programmed that's my own, uh, a bit of a wider stereo spread. <clears throat> and I just wanted to talk to you about my master bus over here. I have a lot going on. I have five different effects on the master bus. I'm using barricade and uh, one of their presets on here for some tape compression. I then go to an SSL stereo compressor, the finalizer, CLA's finalizer preset. Didn't mess with that at all, it just comes with it. Uh, tone centric, I add this into it. Easy Mix Metal Masher 2. This one is most of the sound of uh, my master here on an instrumental track. This is a fantastic plugin, and you can get 90% of the way there with just this. And the last thing I have on it, just to really maximize the loudness, is the Weiss MM1 uh, Mastering Maximizer. And I'm using one of the presets in there as well. I got lucky in so far as the random roll on the drums gave me a metal beat. And as I said before, that's totally a genre that I always work in. So on this first one that I'm doing, I got to do one that was probably easier for me to do than if I had picked something really out of my norm. Here it is.
Well, there you have it. That wouldn't be quite the final mix. Some of the levels are a little bit peaky, but uh, that's what I got. I guess I'll put a mix of this song out and stick it on SoundCloud. I'll put a link in the description below in case you enjoyed it enough and you want to hear it again. I think it didn't come out half bad. I got lucky that I pulled up a metal beat and it was something that's a genre I'm very familiar with. Uh, I might come back and do this again if people enjoy watching this video and see if I come up with something like Big Band Jazz or something crazy that I'm really going to have to work hard to get right. And uh, as always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I get back to everybody as soon as I can. And until next time, keep making great music. Hey, friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better. <laughs>